Hello everyone, this is Taylor Edrington with Royal Gorge Anglers in Canyon City, Colorado, the oldest fly shop and fly fishing guide service, and only Orbis endorsed outfitter on the Arkansas River Basin. Thanks so much for viewing, folks. Uh, we're now officially in the fall season in uh, South Central Colorado and uh, enjoying the beautiful weather, a little bit cooler temps here as we uh, move our way into October. Um, but still just tremendous fishing on most of our drainages in the area. Um, the Arkansas is uh, in great shape condition-wise. You know, we've had some great clarity as of late, um, as well as a really solid flow rate um, this fall, you know, right in the uh, 400 to 500 CFS ballpark um, uh, flow rate depending on where you're at, uh, you know, obviously a little bit lower on the upper basin and, you know, right in the uh, 450, 500 mark um, in lower Bighorn and Canyon City area. Uh, and we expect for those flows to fall slightly as we get into, uh, into October more. Um, obviously, our biologists on the Arkansas uh, prefer for flows to be in that 400 CFS uh, range, um, even 350 um, for really productive brown trout spawning. And on the Arkansas, we really typically see um, heavy spawning activity in late October and November, just typically because, you know, we're much warmer in this neck of the woods and um, uh, you know, that's kind of when we start to see that heavy spawning activity. We'll see, you know, some fish on reds here in the coming weeks. Um, and right now, you know, we're really seeing um, trout activity, uh, you know, super, super heavy um, feeding activity out of our brown trout population um, due to the, the fact that they are pre-spawn. It's a time period right now where they're really trying to gain calories um, prior to spawning and um, so we see very opportunistic feeding out of our brown trout population obviously catching some really nice rainbows at the same time in certain areas um, but overall the fishing is is really very very productive at this point um, you know in the 400 500 cfs range uh, very, very weightable across any section. Um, it's a really nice flow rate to wade. Uh, and, you know, some floating opportunities still around, but typically, you know, even though it's floatable, uh, we tend to wade a lot more um, because we're spooking a lot less fish um, on foot than we are out of the boat. Um, and it's just overall much more productive from the waiting standpoint. So we, you know, kind of move into that phase in the fall. Um, but beautiful conditions, like I said, we've had some really nice overcast weather with kind of some light rain showers, even some, you know, snow showers in the high, high country, you know, from Leadville um, or any higher there, um, seeing some snow, um, which is very typical for this time of year. You know, that's not out of the ordinary. Um, but, um, what it has done is, is allowed for some great, um, beta hatch activity with our pseudo betas population. Um, we've seen a strong number of trichos on the water, still some, uh, red quills and even pale morning duns. Um, but our true focus right now within, uh, the insect profile, the aquatic insect profile is, um, definitely focused on the pseudo betas population, trichos, some midges, um, you know, obviously our breadwinners with stoneflies and cranefly larvae, and then streamer activity has been very, very productive, which is always the case as the brown trout population gets into pre-spawn and they're more territorial. Um, so, you know, basic, uh, concept as far as how we approach the river right now, um, a lot of nymphing going on, although we're still uh, finding some really good windows to uh, dry dropper fish, which is obviously a, a lot of fun. Um, and we'll continue to see dry dropper fishing be productive 
Um, you know, so it, a lot of that depends on the weather. Typically, warmer water, we see a little bit more activity in the dry dropper scene. Um, so any days you have cooler overnight lows, it, the next day seems to be more of a nymphing day, especially early on and maybe some dry dropper later in the day. Um, warmer overnight lows, you know, if we have a, a good uh, long spell of, of warmer weather, which it looks like we've got upcoming here being in the 70s and high 60s during the day, um, here in the next few weeks, um, we'll continue to see dry dropper fishing good in the morning. Um, and a lot of times our, our guides are running dry copper dropper, just getting a little bit deeper. Um, we are fishing a lot slider profile, um, lead attractor drives this time of year, and which I'll show you, um, as compared to the bigger attractor drives, uh, terrestrials, you know, hoppers, stuff like that have really waned. So, while we're fishing some, you know, the odd hopper pattern here and there, we're really focusing more on, you know, red trigger, tan, yellow body detractors. Um, and, uh, you know, basically um, from the nymphing aspect, you know, really just your core rigs for this uh, river right now, you know, stonefly or cranefly larva up front. And then, like I said, red quill nymphs are, are definitely on scene still heavily trico nymphs and the uh, pseudo beta nymphs underneath definitely have your emergers handy um, for any hatch activity and then you know obviously your your adults in the uh, pseudo beta and trico category and some red quill spinners out there as well um, let's take a look at a few patterns um, and um, kind of kind of take a peek at, at what we like to do there. Like I said, dry dropper activity is still around. So um, a few attractor drives that I like to focus on. Um, Jaeger's, uh, you know, red bodied 409 and yellow bodied 409. One of my favorite patterns during this time period, a good slight profile fly. Um, kind of a breadwinner pattern from the summer through the fall is the chubby, but that royal body and smaller sizes is just a prolific pattern, size 16 being my favorite favorite kind of uh, size there. Yellow chubbies, again, size 14, 16, just a great, great pattern for an attractor. Um, and then here's a tan chubby. So royal tan and yellow chubbies are going to be standbys during this time period. Easy to see, good to do a, a dry copper dropper rig because they float so well and they're easy to see, like I said. Um, as we get into the, um, you know, hatch matcher dries, um, you know, red quill spinners are obvious, uh, you know, you know, flies to have in your, in your box. That's a crystal wing spinner. That's probably our number one. Um, like I said, a lot of trichos hatching, um, during this time period, we're seeing a lot of trico activity. So have your adult trico, like the hackle stacker trico. Size 20, 22, that's a good size. Um, your uh, chubby trico, another really good, you know, uh, trico spinner um, there. And then, like I said, the pseudo betas are primaries right now from the hatch scene. Um, your uh, CDC comparadon with the biot body is one of my favorites, size 18, 20. Real dark, so real similar to the, uh, you know, actual hatching bug there. Um, and then, you know, other, other um, you know, good patterns um, or like the Moorish Mayday or the Film Critic um, in, in that pseudo Vedas category. As far as emergers kind of getting down in the water column now um, on the emergers, uh, your bat wing is always just a primary uh, fly to have uh, during this time period, during any betas time period, that's a great fly. CDC loop wing, another great pattern um, for your pseudo betas. And then one of my favorites in a beadhead form, still an emerger, is uh, the magic fly, which is an excellent trico emerger, okay? And then um, as we get down into the nymph category, 
Um, you know, for lead flies on a, on a double or triple nymph rig, um, your golden stones are, are going to be primaries. Tungsten Goldie, um, great lead golden stone pattern. Um, we fish a lot of tongue teasers this time of year. It's a really, you know, primary pattern um, up front. So a little bit darker representation. And then larger iron sallies, like size 12 and 14, that's just kind of a breadwinner pattern. But, you know, two-bit stones and tongue stones are great as well. Just other great patterns to have for up front. Like I said, crane fly larvae, and I fish these in multiple sizes and colors. Um, for your larger olive, um, this is your check uh, larva here with the target section in it. Great olive uh, crane fly representation. And then uh, there are a lot of tan crane flies out there right now, and this is Jaeger's crane, um, kind of a tan um, crane fly. And then uh, caddis larva, you know, always present in the water column, but we're fishing a little bit larger caddis larva to represent your, um, your October caddis. This is um, Barr's uncased caddis, which is always good, but we fish that in a size 14, 16, pretty heavily during this time period. Um, the roller caddis, Shea Gunkel's pattern, size 14, so in that larger size. We like that a lot. Um, and then once we get kind of into the red quill, um, you know, uh, life cycle, you know, for that nymph, we really, really like the biot um, body, Larry Kingry's biot body red quill nymph with the tungsten bead. Nice and heavy gets down. Good uh, middle fly for a dry copper dropper or middle fly for a, a triple nymph rig. Um, Mike Mercer's Micro Mayfly with that red body. And um, one that's kind of a crossover between a red quill and a pseudo betis is the brown shot glass. I tend to think they take this fly more as a red quill with that red bead up front, um, but that's Shea Gunkel's uh, shot glass in a brown. Um, and uh, then we kind of get into um, our pseudo betis, which is a real primary bug during this time period and really through the month of November even. So October, November, kind of our, our heavy fall time period, pseudo betis is going to be a primary. Um, we've got a purple shot glass, which is, Shea, again, Shea Gunkel's pattern, you know, size 18, 20 on that purple shot glass. Um, we've got a purple juju betis, which is Obviously, a very popular pattern, um, Charlie Craven's pattern. Um, and we just love purple this time of year. It is the most visible color in the light spectrum for trout. Um, and our pseudo betas are so dark, it's just a great imitation. Um, then we've got um, our black two bit hookers. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be great, you know, primary. Um, dropper nymphs, um, you know, size 16 and 18 on those. A lot of crossover between a pseudo betis and um, a trico nymph in that black two bit hooker. And then um, a sleeper color, just to keep in mind that we do really well with this time of year, is pink. And that pink radiation um, betis, again, another shag uncle pattern is just fantastic this time of year. Just a different color to mix it up with. Still kind of that mayfly profile, but just a, a nice color that works really well in the fall. Um, as far as streamers go, you know, always, again, always fishing tandem, and you'll see that a recurring topic in all of our video reports, or if you talk to us in the shop. We always fish two flies when streamer fishing. You know, fish uh, right now being pre-spawn, our brown trout population being pre-spawn, they're very, very territorial. And so, you know, they're, they're going to be, um, you know, in, in big time chase mode if a small fish gets in their territory. Um, so we really focus on that um, and, and kind of look at flies up front that are 
our larger profile, you know, bait fish imitations, um, also orange and rust fishes really well um, during this time period. So we'll, for our lead fly, go pretty big, you know, dirty hippie, um, olive is a great um, upfront fly, dirty hippie in the brown, which really looks just like a little baby brown trout. Um, and then, you know, uh, a baby gonga in the olive, which looks just really bait fishy uh, as well. Um, I really like that baby gonga in the rust color during this time period as well. And then underneath, my key color for my dropper uh, streamer is black right now. Black is just killer. Um, black bow face, tungsten bead, or a black slump buster, um, pretty hard to beat. You know, also like Thin Mints, um, a lot of streamers you can fish, but those are kind of, you know, some flies to focus on. Um, so, um, covered a lot there, you know, as far as, uh, you know, flies are concerned. If you have any questions, you can always contact us toll free, 888-994-6743, or for any other information that I've covered, um, obviously. Um, all the flies that I've uh, shown you today are available for online purchase on our web store um, at royalgorgeanglers.com and go to your feature flies pane within the shopping uh, pull down and you can find any of these flies or just plug one into the search window um, and uh, happy to ship anywhere. Free shipping on anything on our web store over $50, just keep that in mind. Um, also, as we're getting into October, um, just want to mention that uh, we have our big fall sale on October 14th, Saturday, October 14th. Um, doors open at 8 a.m. through 1 p.m. And this is our big fall fest event. We will have a couple really cool free seminars in store, uh, we'll have Robert Younghands, the bug guy, in store. He's going to do a great aquatic invertebrate presentation, a great entomology presentation for those of you who want to learn more about uh, the bug population in the Arkansas and other drainages. There's really no one better in the state of Colorado than Robert. He'll be here. Um, we'll have some other great uh, key seminars that will help you with uh, your angling tool set uh, and uh, the sales are just super deep. It's the deepest sale of the year for the store here. Buy a dozen, get a dozen free flies, no limits on that. Um, you know, we've got $200 off Sims G3 waders. We've got a lot of other great specials. All of our sportswear is on sale up to 75% off throughout the store. Um, just a lot of really, really great buys that day. Um, and we've got free beer, refreshments, come hang out, um, and, uh, take advantage of some great promotions that day. Um, we'll have a few door prizes you can win as well. Um, again, that's Saturday, October 14th, and that's our Fall Fest event. You can check out more details, um, here this coming week, uh, We'll be sending a newsletter with most of those deals uh, early next week. Um, and uh, you can also check out our Facebook page uh, and see our Fall Fest event listed there. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Like I said, um, all of these topics that I've covered should go through the month of October. Um, shouldn't be any real changes there. Obviously, we will update if we... Uh, see any major changes um, in the fishing, but overall just great fall fishing on the Arkansas right now and we expect that to continue and, and do remember that, you know, we've got such a long fishing season on this river um, and, uh, you know, we were fishing it hard through Thanksgiving, so, you know, a lot of uh, high country trout streams and you know, different rivers uh, above, you know, eight, 9,000 feet in elevation, uh, you know, start to really slow down during this time period. But we're really, really just uh, 
getting fired up for the fall season um, on the Arkansas River. And, you know, we've got the Arkansas tailwater, which will really come into play in late October after the lake's done turning over. Um, so you've really got some great options in our area. Um, small streams continue to fish well. Um, give us a call if you have any questions whatsoever. Toll free 888-994-6743 or shoot us an email anytime at info at royalgorgeanglers.com. Thanks so much for viewing. Have a great day on the water and we hope to see you soon.